Hello, my name is Mrs Powell and I'm going to give you an introduction to the Early Years Foundation Stage curriculum and a few pointers to help you with your child starting school. The reception team is uh, made up of two, uh, two teachers and three teaching assistants. Um, I'm Mrs Powell and I teach in Wren's class and Ms Grosvenor uh, teaches in Owl's class. Mrs Peake um, is the teaching assistant in Wren's class and Mrs Webb is the teaching assistant in Owl's class. Mrs Stovell works between the two classes. However, we do all tend to work across the whole unit. So we get to know all the children um, and uh, get to, to teach them all as well, which is really, really good. OK, so um, I wanted to talk to you about a typical day in school. Um, in the foundation stage, we don't really have a, a completely typical day. We're quite flexible. Um, the children will come to school in the morning. We'll encourage them to be independent, hang up their own coat, put their book bag away, put their water bottle on the shelf. Um, the children will have a coat peg and a drawer that has their name on so they'll be able to go and find um, where to put their things and of course we'll be there on hand to help them. We will obviously register the children. Um, the children um, will then be encouraged to play within inside and outside the classroom. Um, it might be a directed adult led task or it might be their own play that um, they're using. There might be an activity on the carpet. Um, the children will then have playtime. They can purchase a snack from school, um, which is 30p. Um, and you will get a menu home um, so you can see what snacks are on offer and if that might be something your child will like or they can bring in their own snack from home we just encourage it to be a healthy snack so no chocolate um, and no uh, crisps um, the children will then carry on for the rest of the, the, the sort of morning having um, maybe some uh, directed teaching activities or they might be playing within the environment um, we have a real focus on getting them ready for lunch and making sure that they're prepared they wash their hands they get a token which corresponds to the lunch that you've um, picked for them unless of course they're having their own packed lunch from home and they'll have an opportunity to go and get their lunch back um, and get ready for lunch um, the children normally eat their lunch in the hall um, and we do prepare them for this and again they will collect their own lunch um, on their plate and then they will take it to the table where they will sit and there are loads of lovely um, midday supervisors who will help the children um, if they need it and uh, we're all on hand we're normally in the staff room and we can come and help the children too if they if they need a, another familiar face um, and again the children will be encouraged to um, do learning in the afternoon this might be a directed teaching ta uh, teacher or adult focused task, or it might just be that they continue their play from earlier in the day. Um, and obviously, as the year progresses, these activities and directed teacher activities will become more um, apparent throughout the day. Um, but when the children first start, we build them up to that. And then we finish with a lovely story and then send them home to you so if you can wait in the little playground so we've got our outdoor area where the sand pit and the climbing frame is but if you can wait on the other side of the fence um, in that play space um, and then what we will do is we will bring the children out to you we have them in a nice long line and we will not release the children to um, to you until we can see you so what i would suggest is that you really make sure that you're in a nice good visible position when your child comes to the front of the line you can put your hand up and wave certainly for the first few weeks while we're getting used to recognizing you um, this is a, a sort of a safety thing that we do um, and if you can sort of not wave at your child until they are front of the line because otherwise we've had children sort of try and nip out through the gate if you have somebody else picking up your child that day, um, if you could either ring the school office and let them know, or if you could let us know in the morning, then that would be um, really good because then we obviously are expecting a different face um, to pick up. 
In terms of anything medical, we ask that if your child has been sick or um, they've had diarrhea, you um, must keep your child at home for at least 48 hours after the last bout of sickness or diarrhea. Um, this is just to protect, obviously, the other children and, and um, staff and the spread of any illnesses. Um, you need to just ring the school office. There is an absence line. Um, you can press a corresponding number and it will take you through to the absence line and then you can explain why your child isn't in school um, for that day and we ask that you ring every day and preferably before nine o'clock if you don't you will get a text message from the school asking you to ring and explain why your child isn't there um, head lice are so common please check your child regularly um, if your child has long hair, can you make sure it's tied up for school? Um, and that just helps to reduce the spread of the lovely little uh, creatures living in our hair. Um, if your child does have head lice, if you could let us know and we can send out a text message or a letter just explaining um, and encouraging parents to check their children's hair as well. But please don't be embarrassed by it. It's one of those things that seem to happen in school. Unfortunately, we can't um, administer uh, medication at school unless it's an ongoing um, medicine like an inhaler or something and you will need to speak to um, our Senko who will then set up a care plan. Um, most um, antibiotics and things we tend to children tend to work it so you can give them one in the morning one when they get home from school and then one in the evening before bed so there are ways around it. Um, if you are at all worried or your child is on um, you know, ongoing medication like an inhaler, of course, let us know and we can point you in the right direction and get that sorted out for you. So all of you should have re um, received your packs now with the letter in explaining um, our staggered start into school. Um, so we find it best for the children to just have a more gentle start into school um, to get them used to it. And I know a lot of you might be sat at home thinking, but my child does has been doing nursery five days a week from eight till six. And I don't know what it is about children starting school. I've been doing this job for a very, very long time now. And children just, I think it's the change, having had the summer holidays maybe at home, and then suddenly they start school and um, different routines, different people, different things to do, um, that the children do get really, really tired. So um, I didn't, this is why we, have just a bit of a slower start into school and and for us to really get to know your children as well maybe in a smaller group so school starts on wednesday the first of september um, for these three days the children will either attend mornings or afternoons um, and you should have um, had your slot with your letter you received in your pack um, so the first group will be dropped off at 9 30 and if you can come to the big red gates where you've been coming for stay and play where the big playground is um, and you will then be greeted by a member of staff and if you could collect from these gates as well we will bring the children out to you and the same for the group in the afternoon. Um, on the second week the children will all be in for the morning session um, so you'll be in at um, 8 8.35 and the children will stay for lunch and then we will return your children to you again by the main gates at one o'clock after they've had their lunch. And then from Friday, the 10th of September, all the children will begin school full time. Um, in the, this transition period, we will be watching your children. And if we feel or you feel that maybe your child would benefit from a little bit of a slower transition into school, then we will come and speak to you about this or please come and speak to us about this and we can discuss it a little bit further. Um, so, yes, we can't wait to see you. The Early Years Foundation Stage Framework is actually for children aged um, from birth up until they leave uh, their reception year or the end of foundation stage when they're five. The, um, if your child has been to a preschool setting or a nursery, then they will have already been working towards some of the guidance in the framework. Um, and as they join us in reception, we, we're a continuation of this, really, um, working towards the early learning goals that come at the end of the foundation stage framework. 
The curriculum is play-based, so um, we work from the experiences um, of, the, of the children. Um, we allow them to make their own discoveries through play. So if your child comes home and says that they have played all day, then that is great because it means that they're um, initiating their own learning, they're making their own discoveries, they feel safe when they're playing, which means that generally they'll take more risks within their play. And obviously we can manage those risks and make sure that the children are safe. Um, we like the children to be active, um, learning through play, um, but we also encourage them to be independent we use a play planner in the classroom where the children can pop their name onto um, an area and then they can go and work in that area. The early learning goals set out what most children are expected to achieve by the end of the early years foundation stage. Not all children will achieve all the early learning goals and that's absolutely fine. We will meet with you throughout the year and we will uh, help you um, and inform you if we feel that your child maybe needs a little bit help in, in one of the areas uh, and if there's anything that you can do to help at home. So there are seven areas of learning within the um, earliest framework and these are made up of three prime areas and four specific areas which I'm going to go and talk about a little bit more um, in the next slides. Uh, when the children are assessed against the areas at the end of the reception year, we will use um, observations and information about your children that we've built up throughout the year. So the three prime areas are personal, social, and emotional, communication and language, and physical development. And the reason that these are the prime areas is because the thought path is that these uh, prime areas are what the children need to be able to go and work towards the specific areas that we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. So the specific areas of learning are mathematics, expressive arts and design, literacy, which includes reading and writing and understanding of the world. And as you can now see how those prime areas that we talked about before will feed into these. So the children, for example, to be able to learn to read or write, need to be able to communicate. They need to be able to talk about things maybe that they found in their environment when they're understanding the world or they need their gross motor skills to be able to dance around or act out um, in the role play corner. Or if they're using um, their mathematics skills, they need to be able to verbalize how or what their thought process is. So there's lots of different aspects. And this is why we believe that the prime areas are so important for us to um, get the best out of the children in the specific areas. Um, in order to get the prime and the specific areas, your children will be learning through play um, or they might be having an activity that they're completing with an adult. And during this, they will be um, engaging with other people in their environment using the characteristics of effective learning. We will also comment on these uh, within the uh, report that you get at the end of the year. So some children might be involved in an activity where they are just playing and exploring, which is so important. So they could be um, in the sand pit and they are just playing and exploring, or they might be in the outside area looking through leaves and twigs. They might be active learning, so they might be um, doing a puzzle or um, actively using their learning to help them with an activity. Or they might be thinking critically and making links between their learning, something maybe they've learned earlier. They might be then using those skills or that thinking to then help them or aid them in their uh, in another activity. So these are really important skills and we a lot of our observations are based around how the children do engage with other people and their environment. Here is an example of a um, curriculum letter that we do every term. So we do them six times a year and it just gives you an idea of the topic that we're learning and what we're doing in the different areas of learning. This is an old one that I've put up on the screen, um, but it shows you um, what we'll be doing that term. It shows you a little bit about how you can help your children at home and then obviously the areas of learning. 
Um, these are published on the school website under Wren's class or Owl's class, and it's also on Tapestry. So you can go and you can have a look and see what your children will be learning about. Um, we found this particularly helpful because parents can then um, talk to their children about what their topic is. And if you've got any um, ideas or uh, your children have got any interests or, you know, if we're learning um, about toys and you can talk to your children about the toys that they've got at home. So it's a really good way of sparking those conversations, especially if maybe your child comes home and um, they don't necessarily talk about what they've done at school all day, then it's a good way of you starting up a conversation with them. Similarly, we have a um, weekly uh, learning themes sheet that gives you an idea of what we're actually learning about that week. And again, we publish this on our, on Tapestry, so you can have a look and see what the children will be learning about. It's really good for pre-learning, so if you know we're going to be learning nursery rhymes, you might want to talk or sing some nursery rhymes in the car. Um, also, if you want to know what sounds we're learning this week, um, or if you just want a bit of an overview so you can use it as a conversation starter with your children at home, it's just a really good way of us communicating what we're learning with you. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions or anything, then please get in touch. And then at the bottom, we normally just add a little reminder if we've got PE this week or um, reminding you to read with your children at home. So it's just a really good way of communicating with you what we're learning that week. Again, especially if your child comes home and maybe doesn't want to um, talk to you about what they've been doing, it, you, you've got an idea of what they've actually been learning. So it's a really good idea. So the classroom environment is set up so that the children can access all these areas of learning. Um, unlike uh, when the children get older, where you might just have an English lesson or a maths lesson, we provide opportunities for the children to be developing um, their learning through all the areas of, um, of, of learning. And in fact, some activities uh, can um, promote most of the areas of learning. And I'm going to go on to talk you through that in a little while. Um, but we will have um, areas of the classroom which are um, specifically there to help with physical development or to encourage communication and language or mark making or art and design. Um, so if you were to ever come into the classroom, you'd be able to see these these areas of learning. So I just want to talk you through an example of how one activity can spark off so much learning. So this little boy is obviously dressed up as a builder and he's in our outdoor area in our building area. He will be sharing and taking turns with his friends. Um, especially when it comes to maybe turning the handle on the cement mixer or building a wall. There's also the communication and language involved where he might be talking about what he's doing. He might be telling his friends what to do. He might be using terms that he knows that builders might use or vocabulary that's linked to building. He might be exploring letter sounds or writing. Um, you can't see in this picture, but we actually had clipboards out. So he might be mark making or writing down maybe things that he needs, or he might be drawing a plan of his house that he's going to build or, or whatever he's going to build. He's developing an interest in different occupations and ways of life, which is a huge part of our understanding the world um, early learning strand. And he, he will be talking maybe about what a builder does. He might already have some knowledge of what a builder does from a book, or he might be going to find that out afterwards or on the internet. And in maths, he might be learning about numbers. So he might be counting the bricks he needs, um, how many people are working with him. He might be counting how many turns he has to take of the um, cement mixer handle. So there's lots, as you can see, there are so many ways that children can learn, and this is just through one activity. We don't just um, let the children go off and play and, and stand around and watch them. Um, this does make up some of the time in uh, the classroom and when we're learning. However, we do have a balance between adult-led activities and child-initiated activities. So we will take um, a group of children off with maybe a teacher or a TA where we'll do a more focused activity 
or we might have the children on the carpet before we go off to do our um, child-led activities. We might have an activity where we do a phonics activity or we use the smart board or we might be doing some counting or singing on, on the carpet as a whole class. So as you can see, there's a definite balance um, between the child-initiated activities and the adult-led activities. Literacy, reading and writing is obviously a huge part of our learning. Um, we learn um, phonics. Uh, phonics is how we learn to read and write. Um, we use synthetic phonics. Uh, so we actually say the sound the letter makes. So I'm going to do a, another um, PowerPoint like this, but about phonics. Um, we do phonics every day uh, in reception. And um, this starts with phase one phonics, which is all about listening. And um, we play listening games. We do lots of rhyming. We do lots of word word games and, and have fun with words and sounds. And this is such an important part before your child can read and write. And even if your child is already already knows some sounds or can read some words, that's fantastic. But we still need them to have that understanding of, of listening and knowing those sounds and having that word play. In the classroom, we always have opportunities for mark making and we value all mark making. We practice a precursive um, way of writing, but before we even get to that stage, we encourage the children to mark make in so many different ways. This might be with paint brushes and water pots outside, or it might be with felt tips or pencils or chalks. We really value all the mark making children do um, as this is the start of their writing journey. Speaking and listening is also really, really important. And I've touched on listening with regards to phonics, but speaking and listening is so important and modelling back to your children how to say things, being um, an, a good example of speaking and listening for your child, being a good role model, taking turns in that conversation with your child so that they understand that while somebody's talking, you listen and vice versa. And playing with language and communication, you know, understanding, playing fun games, whispering, using loud voices, understanding different vocabulary, just really, really allowing your child to have fun with that, with language. And of course, um, helping their understanding. And that can be in many ways. So it might be by asking them to do things. Can you go and get me the teddy and put it on the bed or it might be um, that their understanding of different vocabulary. Children have a love for long words and, and sometimes I think we, we don't give them the opportunity to do that because we think that they won't understand. But actually, let's give them the chance. If they can understand some of, and say some of these really long dinosaur names, then I'm sure we can really develop their vocabulary and their understanding of word and language. So at Redlands, we like the children to read at home regularly and we encourage little and often. So we say at least three times a week, but anything else would be a bonus. And it's also finding out what benefits your child when your child likes to read. Some children might like to read as soon as they get home from school. Some children prefer to read before they go to bed. Some children prefer to read first, first thing in the morning when they get up. So just find out what works for your child and this might change the children are so tired when they come home from school i'm sure that actually sometimes the last thing they want to do is sit down and read their reading book the reading books that you will have in your book bag currently have no words in them which i know as an adult can be a little frustrating but this again is so important in their journey of learning to read we need the children to be using their language um, talking about the pictures, using their inference skills. So if it's a picture of a lady with an umbrella, you can talk about, well, what's the weather? Well, how do we know it's raining? So it's all these things that um, really develop your child's understanding and their comprehension, um, which will be really useful when they um, start to read. Um, we ask that you write in their reading record every time you read their book that they bring home from school. So if we're not if you read a bedtime story, you don't have to read write that about that book in there. But every time you read um, at home 
your child's school book, please can you just jot down, even if you just date it and sign it, you don't have to write a comment, but it just helps us to know when to change your child's reading book. Otherwise, sometimes your child will say, yes, I've read it, and then they haven't, or they might say they have read it, but we haven't changed it because we haven't seen it written in their reading book. So that would be great if you could um, just record that in their reading book. And please don't stop reading their bedtime stories because these are really, really important too. And that's the fun bit of reading. So please don't think that because they've read their school book to you that you don't have to read them a bedtime story. Read that one as well, but still, still let them have their bedtime story. So in um, this last term, I've been in contact with your children's nurseries and preschool settings, um, and I've got to meet some of your lovely children and talk to their key workers um, at their preschool provision. Um, they've also given me some transition records, um, which just give me an idea of where your children are working or where they were working in nursery. Then during the first um, sort of term when your children start school, we'll then be baselining your children helping them to settle, seeing where they're working. Um, we also do a statutory baseline assessment um, from the which the DfE have asked us to do, which just gives us an idea of where the children are working at. And this is then kept with the school. And when your children leave school in year six, they will make a comparison. Um, it's nothing to worry about. It's actually a really lovely time that we get to spend with the children on a one to one where we get to talk to them and do some little activities. So please don't worry. It's nothing to worry about at all. Um, in fact, we just turn it around and make it a really enjoyable experience. Um, the children work through um, the development matters, which is linked to the early years framework um, and is a continuation of what they've been working towards in their um, preschool placements. And then at the end of the year, um, we will um, uh, assess your children and say if they're working within the early learning goals. Some of your children might be emerging, so they might not have got there quite yet um, and some of your children will have met those and will be working within within the early learning goals and this informs their next teacher of, of how they're doing and we will have lots of handover and chats with their new teacher but obviously that's a long way off yet because we've got to get through their whole first year at school. Um, if you have any questions on this then please just ask your child's class teacher and we can give you a little bit more information but it really isn't anything to worry about. Um, we also have parents evenings during um, the year where you're invited into school and we get to talk to you um, about how your child settled, which is a really lovely time. And if you've got any questions, um, we also have tapestry, which shows what your children are doing. And equally, it gives you the opportunity to show us what your children are doing at home. Um, so you can upload pictures and things on there, which is always really lovely for us to see. Um, we also write in their reading record books and we tell you how they're getting on with their reading um, at school. So there's lots of different ways that we keep in contact with you about how your children are doing. Um, and it just it just provides us with, um, you know, that whole big picture of how your children are doing. Really. Um, and at the end of the year, um, your children will be provided with a report and this will just give you an outline of how they've done throughout the year um, and um, where they're working. So you'll have that written document at the end of the year um, that you can read. So here's just a few ideas of how you can um, support your children at home. And on the next slide, I go into a little bit more detail about how you can help them. Independence, like I said earlier, is really, really important and it's um, essential to your child, making that, that step and that journey through school, encouraging your child to be independent, whether it's uh, managing their own personal hygiene, putting on their coat, using a knife and fork, all these things you can help your child at home to do. Talking and socialising um, with your children is really, really important and helping them to understand the art of conversation, taking turns, making sure that you look at your child while you're talking to them. I know sometimes we're so busy and doing lots and lots of different things that sometimes we, um, we're always in a rush. And I think taking that time out to talk to your children is really, really important. 
physical play is also really important. Not only does it burn off energy and uh, and helps your child in that way, but it also physical play also helps with core strength. It, and which in effect then helps your child with their fine motor, um, fine motor skills. Early reading and writing, and this doesn't mean by any means that I, I expect your child to be able to write the name or, or uh, read a book. What this means is um, having your bedtime story. When you're walking around and you see words on signs, expressing an interest in them, recognising those words that actually we can tell because of the way they're written. So the, the golden arches of McDonald's most children can, can recognise or the word police on the side of a, a car. Children recognise and read this and that is a part of early reading making up stories, telling stories without a book or without pictures or reading a picture book and making up their own stories. All those children that actually you've read We're Going on a Bear Hunt that many times that they know it off by heart, they can actually read it to you. And yes, they don't recognise the words, but actually uh, memorising a story is a huge part of learning to read. Um, and writing, it doesn't matter if they've written a shopping list that's full of squiggles or they've written um, in a book and they're telling you that it's their story. That's great. This is what we want. This is the first um, stages of writing. And what it's doing is it's, um, it's making your um, child successful and they're writing for a purpose, which is really, really important. Again, early numeracy, those counting songs you can do, sorting the washing into different colours. Um, when you're on your walks looking for numbers in the environment on doors or on post boxes and just recognising that there are numbers in the environment. Exploring um, your environment, understanding the world, talking about why the leaves change when, you're, um, when we're changing seasons. Um, talking about animals that hibernate through the winter, different things like that are really, really um, important and fascinate children. Allowing them to be creative, whether that's dancing around the front room or whether that's making things with glitter and glue and cutting and sticking. These are also really, really important too. And those wow moments. So um, making sure that on tapestry you record anything your children do at home that you're really proud of. And it could be anything like trying a new vegetable to learning to ride their bike without stabilizers or learning to swim please let us know record it on tapestry and let us know so that we know what your children are doing at home as well so here's a more in-depth guide to how to support your child at home We've talked about daily reading, sounds and spelling. So when your child starts learning sounds in phonics, they will bring home a little pack of um, sounds. Please, can you try not to lose them? And please, can you keep them in your book bag when you finish practicing them at home? Because we will use them in school. And the same with spellings. Um, board games are really important because they teach so many skills. However, please don't always let your child win. Um, this is a bit of a learning, a learning um, experience in itself. So um, obviously when we're in a class of, of children or a group and we're playing a board game, if your child has always been allowed to win, they can find it quite hard when they're not the child that wins when we're in school. Um, Counting games and songs we've talked about, music is lovely and you can hear a rhythm, you might want to clap or dance to the rhythm and it, it's lovely um, if it's got words and you can hear the rhyme in them. Word play is so lovely and I spy is such a versatile game because you can play it in so many different ways. So you could play I spy with colour, so I spy something that's the colour red. Or you might play I spy and use letter sounds rather than the name. So I spy something beginning with a p -p -p and ask your children if they can find it. These sorts of games are really good for your children. We talked about talking to your child and I know that sounds really, really simple. But it is really, really important, even if your child does come home and you want to know every detail of their day, um, use the weekly learning themes and use the um, the, the topic web, the sort of curriculum letter to help guide what conversations you're talking about, or they might just want to talk to you about what they had for lunch or what they did in the playground. Cooking is great because it brings in so many skills, talking, following instructions, measuring, counting, and then of course you've got the really fun part of eating things at the end. 
we've talked about writing shopping lists and valuing mark making even if it is squiggles on a page sounding out words again more word play put on your ed coat can you get me the t ed and listen the children will be able to hear those words and it's really tuning their ears in to listen for those sounds which really helps when we go on to blending and decoding with phonics later we talked about physical development and this can include things like climbing riding bikes um, all those sorts of things believe it or not help with their finer motor skills so it helps then when they're writing or drawing or using a pencil or a pair of scissors um, fine motor activities you can use play-doh plaster scene is actually really really good because it's harder to manipulate so it means the children have to work harder and they have to use their their um, fine motor skills more and their, their fingers more to manipulate the plaster scene but there's also things you can do like um, clothes pegs on the line you can peg them onto something and ask the children to unpeg and repeg them there's also um, finger football so you can screw up a little bit of paper and then flick it across the table tweezers are really good for picking things up all those sorts of things are really good really good for developing those fine motor skills we talked earlier about messy play and i know some of us have hang-ups about not getting glitter or play-doh or glue all over the table but honestly letting your child be messy is a really good thing to do whether it's out in the garden in the mud or whether it is up to the table with play-doh or corn flour or whatever they're playing with let your child be messy and the same with scissors teach your child how to use the scissors properly um, let them make little snips in paper children love just cutting little tiny bits of paper and then just get the hoover out and hoover them up when they finish um, getting dressed is a really tricky skill for some children um, and obviously at the moment with the children coming into school in their PE kit it's not a skill we're practicing very much at school so at home practice getting your children dressed even if that starts with them putting on their pajamas because obviously they're easier um, and I know sometimes we're pushed for time in the morning so uh, waiting for your your four-year-old to put on their school uniform can um, can be a very long process so start with pajamas or maybe just start with right okay today I'm going to get you dressed but can you put on your jumper or can you put on your socks and that is a really good skill to be able to use and the same with cutlery um, you practice using a knife and a fork the children use knives and forks at school um, so it's quite a good skill to practice at home and remember praise and encourage your child they're learning they're only four or five and it's really important that they get that praise and encouragement because I know as an adult if somebody says well done to me it makes me happy feel happy and it makes me want to do something even more so the more and more you can praise and encourage your child the better so just a few reminders before um, we come to the end of this PowerPoint. Um, please help your child by naming all items of clothing and water bottles. Um, all the children will have very similar or the same uniforms. So as you can imagine, it's really hard for us to tell whose jumpers who when they've all got an age four to five jumper or whatever. Even socks, if you can. Um, their book bags, water bottles, everything um, that you can name, please name. If you um, write it on in a Sharpie, just be aware that sometimes it does rub off, even, um, even with a permanent pen. Um, or you can get iron in labels or sewing labels, but you know, just be aware. And if the names come out or it's washed out in the wash, just rewrite it on. It just makes it much easier us to reunite your child with their belongings um, try and encourage your child to be independent um, I you know we will encourage them to put their own things away to put on their own coat to put on their own shoes of course we're going to help them if they need that help we're not going to leave them on their own um, however it is really really important um, wiping their own bottom unfortunately we can't wipe their bottoms so if you can encourage your child to wipe their own bottom um, and manage their own personal hygiene making sure they wash their hands um, it would be really really helpful um, 
And I know as parents, sometimes when we're in a rush, it's easier to do these things for our children. But actually try throughout the summer to make them independent, to give them that little bit of independence. Because when they're at school and there's 30 children in their class, if they can be successful on their own, it's going to make them feel more confident um, rather than having to wait around for the help of an adult. Um, read with your children at home. We encourage you to read at least three times. However, if you want to read more, you know, sometimes, especially in those early days, um, it's easier to, to read sort of more, you know, little but often um, because the books are quite short. And then as the books start getting longer, it might be that you you read three times a week or you read a few pages a day. Um, don't forget to read them their bedtime story. Um, because that's still really, really important, like I said earlier. Look on um, Tapestry and the website. I plan on setting up your Tapestry accounts within the next week. So please, can you look out for um, an activation link um, on, on um, your emails? Um, if you don't hear anything, then please just get in touch and I can um, try and sort that out for you. Over the summer, um, we hope to record some stories um, so that your children can access it and get used to us before they then start in September. And obviously on Tapestry and the school website, we will have our weekly themes for learning and our termly topic web. Um, and every term we will upload some photographs um, for you to look at um, on our school website and see what we've been learning over the term. So just a quick overview, I think I've repeated some things on here, but just make sure that in your child's water bottle, it's clearly named, but in the water bottle, it only has water. They can have juice or a carton of juice with their lunch um, if they want to bring one in. Um, but to, for during the day, if you could just ensure that your child's got water in their bottle and we will, we will refill them if they run out of water. Um, during the day we will refill them. We do encourage the children to have regular drinks of water um, throughout the day so, um, uh, so that they can stay hydrated and we do talk to them about the importance of um, keeping hydrated. Please can you make sure that if your child's bringing a snack in for morning play that it's a healthy choice so um, no chocolate or crisps but they can have a, a cereal bar or they could have um, a piece of fruit or cheese and crackers something like that but just if you can make sure that it's a healthy choice that'd be great we also encourage the children not to bring toys in um, for a couple of reasons one the current situation with covid obviously we don't want things being brought in from home but also because they can become a real distraction for the children in the classroom if they've got toys and sometimes the toys don't fit in their trays so that means that they're left on a shelf or put up out of the way so if you can encourage your child not to bring a toy to school, then that would be great. And again, just making sure that all of your children's clothes are labelled. Thank you so much for taking the time to view um, this PowerPoint presentation. It's not the normal way that I would do it, but at least you have the information. If you have any questions about this or about anything else, then please contact me on Miss Grosvenor on Tapestry. Or um, if it's something that actually needs a conversation, then obviously ring the school to make an appointment. Uh, me and Miss Grosvenor are available in the morning and obviously at the end of the day, if you've got something really quick um, to tell us. But obviously for longer conversations, it's easier if we could do it over the phone or if it's something you can write down in a message on Tapestry. Thank you so much. Bye bye.